Today, I'm gonna to be reacting to Barry Keon's audition for the role of Riddler in Matt Reeves' The Batman, which happened to book him the role of Joker. There'll be a link below to watch the full video, which you might wanna check out prior to watching this one because I will be starting and stopping on my way through. Let's get into it. I guess one of the first things that um, that that I note or what comes to mind here is it's obviously no slate on the top of this, which you might find in a normal audition. Um, and then clearly he is not doing this um, self tape in any type of a, a room. He has hired a cameraman uh, to kind of do this this walk through video at an actual practical commercial location. It looks like so. Um, and I would imagine filming this, you're either going to have to try to find a time where nobody is there or have people actually stopping traffic to make sure that nobody gets in the middle of this video, which would be really hard to do. So he definitely went uh, out of his way to put to, uh, something together that he thought was going to be creative and um, stand out. It may appear like simple, you know, walking or looking down in uh, different directions down a hall and, and feel like there's nothing in there. But you could see that even when he came out and the doors of the elevator opened up, he was, he was looking up at something. And all of this reads very specifically um, to me. So again, you're, you're looking at an actor that has control, they've got intent behind it, and can create something out of nothing, which this is far more difficult to do than when you have lines to say. Some of the greatest actors out there are looking through scripts and going, hey, I don't need to say that line of dialogue. I can sell that with a look. This is true acting talent because you're not relying on the dialogue to do anything. This audition is two minutes and 20 seconds completely free of dialogue. So if you're looking at, um, you know, wanting to be able to showcase your work and your intent, if you take that to the extreme, you're going, I will do this with no dialogue whatsoever. Okay, so there's obviously a decision that is being made here, and it's why would I go left, why would I go right? I don't know. When I watched this, it would kind of give me this unsettling feeling of like whoever he was trying to find, whether that be random or a specific person, it was almost a game. Like if I go to the left, the person in that office might die. If I go to the right, that person might die. And just the casualness of this decision is what makes it so eerie and actually work. It becomes almost playful in the sense of murder. Another thing that starts to indicate that, you hear the music in the background, which I don't think he would have had when he did this, but it's, it's kind of hard to tell because I think this was filmed without sound entirely. Um, but it, there, again, there's kind of this lightness to the music, which I helps kind of sell the whole, uh, the whole thing. But you see his hands up on this. And again, this is just a playful thing. It's not this intense thing of I'm going to like murder somebody or find them and, and have this rage behind it. But it's so light, so light. Where are they at? Where are they at? <laughs> That look back becomes so powerful um, because is it, you know, playing as though he hears somebody coming after him or is he just making one last uh, thought of, should I have gone that way? No, I'm on the right track. But again, it's not, um, it's not by chance. It's with intent. It's purpose-filled. <laughs> He 
He stops at one door in particular. What is the significance of the door? What is the significance of the, uh, of the number? It looks like from here, maybe it's 425. But again, if this is all random of where he's gonna go, he stares at this number, I start to think, does that character not like the number 425? Does that feel good to him? Is there something from his past where he decides, no, that's not the door, and he goes on somewhere else? But again, this is not a random look at a door. It's very uh, purposeful, and I would, I would love to know from, from the actor what that thought process was, but you can clearly see that there was a thought process. With confidence now, with confidence, he, he goes down that hall. So whether he's seen what he needs to see or he's finally made that decision, there was no left, right. There was no, is that the door? Once he sees, he likes it, he pursues. This confident now stride, obviously the demeanor, the body language entirely different from before. There's an energy to it. You can see that he's, he's, he's happy with the result of this, but not, you know, over, it's not overplayed, but the stride is different than the walk in, the timing of it. I'm not looking anymore, I am on my way out. All of this, very clear, no dialogue, just from what we're seeing visually. Creepily satisfied, one look back, the job is done. I did it, how dare they? He's got um, obviously this blood streak you know, on his face, presumably went in there, used his cane or something to get that job done, and now he's out. And there we have it. Two minutes and 20 seconds. I think there's so much crammed into that. And again, the actor that can pull that off without any dialogue, this is where it got the attention of the director. Did this get him the role? Probably not, but did it get him an interview, a sit down with the director to talk about it? It absolutely did, and it landed him a role. So I look at this as, as an acting coach with 14,000 teaching hours and been in the business for 25 years. I look at that and say, yeah, I get that. Job well done. For more acting related videos, like and subscribe. We'll see you on the next one.